you'd think that the filmmakers would actually do some research before filming a movie. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 anachronisms in movies. Oh, and you would have me believe that you have found a crack in time. For this list, we're looking at those movie moments where something occurred or something was seen, heard, or used during the story that wasn't around at the time in history when the film takes place. However, we're excluding those that are intentionally used by filmmakers for comedic effect. We will, we will rock you. <laughs> Number 10. Canada's Maple Leaf, The Untouchables. We used to say you can get further with a kind word and a gun than you can with just a kind word. <laughs> this Brian De Palma film follows a group of real-life FBI agents who are out to stop the infamous Prohibition-era gangster Al Capone. I want you to get this f where he breathes. I want you to find this Nancy boy, Elliot Ness. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss on his ass. In reality, Capone's criminal career ended when he was sent to prison in 1932. Al Capone. We have no Mr. Capone. So how then could the Canadian Maple Leaf show up on crates of liquor he was smuggling into Chicago if that specific symbol wasn't created until 1965? Remember, the liquor cases are marked with the red Maple Leaf. Yes, sir, I have it. While it's true that some form of Maple Leaf has been an emblem of Canada since the 1800s, the country's signature 11-pointed design wasn't chosen for the nation's flag until roughly 35 years after the events of the movie. Whoops. Federal officer, you're under arrest for violation to the full stat act. Number 9. Singapore, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Captain Barbosa, welcome to Singapore. The third Pirates film follows Captain Barbosa, Will Turner, and Elizabeth Swan on a rescue mission to Singapore to free Jack Sparrow from Davy Jones' locker. Hey, I know him. He was in Singapore. <laughs> Singapore! Captain! However, Singapore as we know it didn't exist in the 1700s when this film takes place. Prior to the founding of modern Singapore in 1819, the country went by several names none of which was Singapore. The East India Trading Company finds me the day you show up in Singapore. It is coincidence, huh? <laughs> Perhaps more egregious is the fact that, during the 18th century, inhabitants of the area wouldn't have been Chinese, as depicted, but Malay, since Singapore is relatively near the Malaysian Peninsula. Better keep this between ourselves. We don't want anyone running off to Singapore, do we? Filmmakers stated that they weren't striving for historical accuracy when producing these films. We'd say that's an understatement. You are so fang, the pirate lord of Singapore. Number 8. Lake Wasoda, Titanic. I grew up there near Chippewa Falls. Chronicling the final moments of the infamous unsinkable ship, this historic movie still includes its fair share of anachronisms. For example, the guards trying to locate our star-crossed lovers are equipped with flashlights far more powerful than what would have been available in 1912. Come about! <gasps> but it's Jack's wistful story about Lake Wasoda that's got our attention. While talking Rose off a ledge, Jack explains how cold the water below is by reminiscing about his childhood ice fishing trips to Lake Wasoda. I remember when I was a kid, me and my father, we went ice fishing out on Lake Wissota. However, that man-made lake was not formed until a few years after the Titanic sank, making sure this scene sinks the film's historical credibility. Ice fishing is, you know where you... I know what ice fishing is! <sighs> Number 7. iPhone, Bernie. Mr. Bernie Teeter. black comedy from the mind of Richard Linklater. This film is based on the true story of Bernie Teed, a man who befriended a curmudgeonly old rich woman and ultimately murdered her in 1996. That's got to be about the lowest thing a man could ever do, ain't it? Shoot a little old lady in the back? Four times. After the murder, Bernie manages to keep her death hidden from his community for the better part of a year. In that time, he answers various calls from people looking to speak to the deceased. Oh, God. Problem is, he takes some of those calls on an iPhone. 
She's with me right now, Lloyd, and I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier, but she's had a series of small strokes. Remember how we said this movie takes place in 1996? Remember how the first iPhone was introduced in 2007? We bet it wasn't even a glimmer in Steve Jobs' eye back in the mid-90s. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Number 6. Gibson ES-345 Guitar – Back to the Future Man, the dance is over. Unless uh, you know somebody else that can play the guitar. What's time travel without a little rock and roll? Marty McFly is a teen from 1985 stuck in 1955, so to keep up with the times, he's got to pull out the big guns, which in this case means a Gibson ES-345 guitar. All the kids at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance are getting down to Marty's interesting interpretation of Johnny B. Good, which in itself is another noticeable, albeit intentional, anachronism. John, it's Marvin! Your cousin Marvin Barry! You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this! The funny thing is, the Gibson model he's playing and its custom Bigsby vibrato weren't even invented yet. Basically, everything about this guitar would have been considered futuristic in 1955. We won't even get started on Marty's moves. Number 5. Another 48 Hours Billboard, The Doors Ladies and gentlemen, here now, The Doors! This biopic chronicles the life of Doors lead singer Jim Morrison, who passed away at the age of 27 in 1971. One scene not long before his passing sees the troubled rocker on a window ledge above Los Angeles. Unfortunately, the background gives away the fact that they were filming in the 90s. Behind Val Kilmer is a billboard for the movie Another 48 Hours, starring Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte, which came out in 1990. You know what I am? I'm your worst f***ing nightmare, man. I'm a nick with a badge. That means I got permission to kick your f***ing ass whenever I feel like it. Sure, it's a simple mistake, but it definitely sucks us out of the story. Baby, we're rolling, Jim. Greeny, jump! <laughs> Number four, YouTube, The Hurt Locker. Negative, I don't see him. Hey, Sanborn, he's right at my 12 o'clock. Look, 12 o'clock. Roger that, I got him. Soldiers on the ground have it rough, as they're constantly facing life-threatening situations. And the group in this movie is a bomb disposal team in Iraq. So you know they're in for some stress. Okay, so what's the play? During one operation, a soldier notices someone with a camcorder and surmises that the video will end up online. Only problem with that is, YouTube was launched in February 2005, when this movie took place in 2004. Getting ready to put me on YouTube. What's more, to blow off steam during downtime, one soldier is seen playing Gears of War, which wasn't released until 2006, on an Xbox 360, which wasn't released until 2005. We guess filmmakers have it rough, too. <laughs> Number 3. The Map – Raiders of the Lost Ark Just because the Indiana Jones series is so beloved doesn't mean it's immune to boo-boos. When Indy travels the globe trying to locate the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis, there's a sequence featuring a stylized graphic that shows his trajectory on a map. It's an inventive way to move things along, but there are numerous naming errors, as the map showed the world as it appeared in 1981, when the film was released, and not 1936, when the film takes place. You chose the wrong friends. For example, Indy passes Jordan, which was known as Transjordan until the late 40s, and Thailand, which in 1936 was called Siam. Still a cool scene, though. Number 2. The Electric Chair, The Green Mile We got a dead man walking here. 
telling the story of John Coffey, a powerful and spiritual inmate who gives faith to the pessimistic guards. This masterful Stephen King adaptation is set in a Louisiana prison in the mid-1930s. You won't kill a raping baby killer twice. Its title refers to the corridor the prison's inmates must walk down to meet their doom in the form of the electric chair. However, unless that hallway passes through a wormhole, this would have been impossible in 1935, as Louisiana would not adopt the electric chair as its form of capital punishment for another five years. Take my hand, boss. You see for yourself. Instead, these characters should have been sentenced to an old-fashioned hanging. On two. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Come on, Colin. Real nice. Real. How many did I do yesterday? Three. Three. Did you enough? Let's do seven. There you go. Come on, let's go for seven. Sometimes I wonder why I swear. The greatest erection on the continent. <laughs> the greatest erection of the age. <laughs> the greatest erection on the planet. Number one, Kilts Braveheart. Many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that? While we can't fault Mel Gibson's masterpiece about Scottish soldiers fighting for independence too much, there are some inaccuracies throughout the film. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Perhaps the most notable mistake, however, is one of the most well-known aspects of the movie. That's right, we're talking about the iconic kilts the soldiers wear throughout the film. While they certainly look badass in battle, that's not what the real Scottish soldiers in the 13th and 14th centuries wore, as kilts weren't invented until the 1500s, roughly 200 years after the events of the movie. My kilt will fly up, but I'll try it. Oh, right? God, you certainly didn't learn any manners on your travels. What they likely actually donned were bright yellow shirts dyed using things like leaves or horse urine. They must have smelled great. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I really don't like to talk about that. Which movie anachronism did you find the most annoying? Always knew someday you'd come walking back through my door. For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.